All right, Jules, let's get this out of the way. You were there. I don't know if Donnarumma said it. One of those situations where you have such a bad guy. As bad as, bad as Donnarumma was, he, I'm sure... Yeah, Beraldo is saying... Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you're right. You're um, right. Yeah, the difference is between the two is Beraldo's younger, yeah, less experienced, yeah, makes yeah. probably one-tenth as much as what Donnarumma makes. But let's talk about the other guy here who, who went missing. Now, we know with Kylian Mbappe, you only need one second for him to influence a game. Right? We yeah. know that... Sometimes he just doesn't, you don't see him and then he appears. But this strikes me as the kind of game where you need to step up more. Mm. Especially when you look around, you, you, you see that at halftime, Lucho's obviously made a mistake. Then he's changed it around with, by, by bringing on Speedy. I, I thought there was very little there. Yeah. And some of it is down to the way Barcelona defended, but... A lot of it is down for him. I mean, yeah, I yeah. expected to see more instances where maybe he came deep to get the ball. Well, he never and does that. He's not very comfortable doing that. No, he, I think he was well, more in the last third. Maybe he should, rather than just sitting there and waiting for a transition. But then what would happen? Yeah, I think he just had to be closer to the box in the first half, which he wasn't. And I think, credit to Barcelona, like you said, Kunde and Arojo defended really well on him. They doubled up on him. Like Kubasi and Cancelo doubled up on Dembele in the first half on the other side. I just it felt it felt disconnected from the rest of the team for most of the game really even in the second half even when PSG were on top it uh, it just never really felt in the game I mean the 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 numbers are terrible for him it, it's no shots on target he had three shots none on target only one successful dribble out of five only three duels won out of twelve he lost the ball thirteen times I think only Dembele and and maybe. Barcola or somebody like that lost more than him but he was just not involved and I think that one of the one of the keys again I know it's, it's obvious but for the second leg they need to find Luis Enrique and PSG need to find a way of getting him more involved so do you play him centrally maybe do you play him wide but just feed him more because there was a time in the second half especially where he didn't really have the service that he needed and when when he had it he kept making the wrong decision the extra touch or two extra touches just the wrong ball every single time and it was it was very unlike him because he's, he's usually good let's be honest he, he's carried this team in the Champions League so far this season and yet it was just not his night he was not there you know my love for Lucho but if I'm Nasser I, I I'm, I'm I look at this and I say all right hang on a minute we just spent we spent 80 million on this Colomwani fella. Yeah. Who Even Gonzalo Ramos. Who Why is he coming on after 90 minutes? Why not earlier? Gonzalo Ramos, who started who, who, who started at the weekend and what on. Late changes. But, but what I'm wondering is if you spend, I mean, between the two of them, right, they've committed 150 million. Yeah. And those two guys, on a night when it's not working for you, don't get a look in. Now, I know, Lucho, yeah. you like to do things differently, but... You have to get it right. And you've had so much time to prepare. Because yeah. let's face it, it was it's obvious from it's obvious from Paris Saint Germain's performances in the league that if they'd really wanted to push, right? If they wanted to win the league by the end of March, they could have. All those stupid draws that they had and whatever, and the fact that, you know, the teams behind them, whether it's Brest or Monaco, none of these people are really pushing them. Yeah. Right. So I imagine you've been using Ligue 1 for the last couple months to prepare for this specific game. Yeah, right? in a way, yeah. And this is the identity that you put out? He just got it wrong. I think he, he was quite honest after the game when he said, like, listen, I picked the players because I thought this would work. It didn't work. Oh, yeah, thank I, you, Captain Obvious. No, no, no I thought no, you were going to pick the players because you thought you because you were planning no, on losing. No, 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 but in the sense that, you know, I, I, he tried something. It worked with Dembele as a false nine against Real Sociedad, for example. Right. So on, maybe play Dembele as a false nine again if you yeah, think. Yeah, but on Wednesday night, he just tried something different. Uh, it was wrong and it was a mistake. And I'm getting a bit frustrated now with these, with all those experiments. Uh, you know, like it feels like a, like my, my friend on a French radio was saying, like it's like a kinder surprise. You know, you just open, you open the chocolate egg and then inside there's this and you don't really know what's coming inside. You don't know what the tactics is going to be. You don't know what the system is going to be. You don't know who the players are going to play and who's going to be there. And yeah, it would be easier next week because Hakimi would be back because Zaire Emery, who was not fully fit to start, I think, and did well when he came on, apart from the Christensen goal, is going to start in that game. But... But yeah, you're right. This is not good enough from a Luis Enrique point of view and certainly not good enough from Mbappe's point of view either. I, I, I just, 
I, I look at this and I look at where Barcelona were going into this, not just obviously the absentees. Uh, you know, it was so nice for me to see Pedri play again. Yeah. Um, but Pedri's not going to, Pedri's not in nine. Maybe he'll be able to start the return leg. Um, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I think uh, he obviously had an impact when he played. But let's not forget, this is a, they're without Gavi, who you might even argue could be their best player or close to it. Um, there, were, there was uh, obviously the, there's been no Balde all season, yeah. and again, right? What about all those all those Joao Cancelo haters? He can't defend, blah blah blah. This is another thing which gets me, right? Target him, right? If you really think that, but Cancelo did a good job, as you mentioned. In the first Kubar half, Kubarsi came across. Yeah, in the first half. In the second one, they lost. They yeah. lost Barcola. Yeah, yeah. Right, but it's also because he's speedy Barcola, which yeah, I yeah, felt, yeah. you know, Dembele was coming inside more, um, which is fine. You can go both ways, but. I, I thought this is a big statement from from it's Barcelona. It's a good win. It's a really good. I think win. it's still very much open. Yeah. I wanted. I talked about Rafinha at the weekend. I'm happy for him because he feels kind of like the forgotten guy. Yeah. Uh, in in the sense that, you know, people get excited about Joao Felix because he scores in the Clásico. People get excited about, you know, Lamine Yamal, rightly so, because he's 16, and it's almost like he's been moved left, right left all over the pitch for me i think i might have said this on monday or maybe the week before for me it's very open and shut jewels if you have to square the books you don't even think about keeping joe felix you prioritize rafinha he may be a saleable asset yeah but i think at this stage if it comes down to rafinha joe felix if it comes down to that choice for me it's it's no choice at all, yeah. you know. And yeah, maybe yeah. not as a starter. If you want to go Yamal and Gavi next season, great, <laughs> pretty darn good, right? Yeah, yeah. But you have to. I, 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 I think this guy deserves a solid run because you can say he's inconsistent, but it's not like Joao Felix is the paragon of of, of consistency no, either. Yeah. And certainly, if he found some form in the second half of the season, where maybe his position was questioned and he felt under pressure, he had to move to the left hand side where the right hand side had always been his favorite side, really, when he was Arène, when he was in Portugal, when he went to Leeds. And now, because of Lamine Yamal's explosion, he had to move to the left hand side and he did really well. Yesterday, he came inside a lot. PSG did, didn't know what to do with him in that first half. And even before his goal, he was dangerous. He had the shot that Donnarumma saved. He, he created a lot of trouble. He made, a, he made a lot of trouble for PSG and it's good. He's, He's still only 27, and yet they paid a lot of money for him. 60 million euros is a lot of money for somebody really who had very limited experience at, in one of the big five leagues because only one season at Rennes, only one season at Leeds, this is it. But, but now, yeah, it seems that something clicked for him this season. It's great. To be fair, the, we've been saying it, Gabi, the, the team is playing better since Xavi announced that he was leaving. They, they, there's more cohesion. I could see yesterday clearly the team spirit, all of that. Um, and and I don't know how far I can take them. Well, they can't win the league, but they will finish second. And in the Champions League, I don't know if that's enough to then be okay next week and qualify for the semi-final and then whoever they face. I don't know, but the team spirit did a lot of the, the job last night in Paris. Now, it's a word about the whole pregame piece because it wasn't quite WWE, but it felt that between Lucho and Xavi, at least the way the things were reported. Yeah. Yeah. Some question about Barca. Yeah, I mean, who, I saw who, it who before. Who the bigger kool is. Yeah, before the Real Sociedad game, I saw it. I mean, it was a Luis Enrique one-man show. He lo I mean, you know he loves the attention all the time. But the fact that he was against the Spanish club even more. And I felt that you saw that character again on Tuesday in the press conference. And the question, I think he, either he got the question wrong or he just, didn't want to get it right. Because I think the question was between you and Xavi, who is more Barca DNA kind of thing? And I think, so his answer was like straight away, definitely me, look at everything I want, you know, for Barcelona, look at my, my points tally, look at this, look at my average point, everything, the treble, blah, 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 blah. So I think that maybe he thought I'm gonna compare me as a, a Barca manager and Xavi as a Barca manager, because really then, if you think be. about the whole career, players, managers, Xavi is a far more, Xavi is a La Masia product, Luis Enrique isn't. So there's a lot of things that Xavi is definitely... Is Luis Enrique not a La Masia product. Luis Enrique played for years at Real Madrid, yeah, as well, of yeah. all places. Yeah. Uh, so it just seems like an, 
totally unnecessary. It was weird. Stupid thing to say to give bulletin board material. Xavi joined Barcelona when he was eight years old. Yeah, okay. but if you compare <laughs> ba- manager to manager, then yeah, of course, with Enrique, with a tray board, with everything you want, has been a, be- not, a better I mean, Barca I- manager than Xavi has been for the two years that he's been in charge, right? Yeah, he also didn't take over. He also, Luis Enrique was also there when, when there was a guy named Lionel Messi who right, was pretty well, good at playing yeah, football. And, and, as well, yeah, and, and Xavi also took over a club that was flirting with insolvency. Yeah, yeah, and, and had the Dutch guy before. So, so let's, 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 I mean, these are silly. If you, I, I, I could have given him a pass if he wanted to talk, oh, who's more Barca DNA? Tactically, in terms of approach, in terms of style of play, like who is more, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the grandson of Johan yeah, yeah, Cruyff yeah, yeah, that they yeah. all keep going on about. Yeah. He might have had a point, and I'm, I, I disagree a little bit with you. I think if this is what he was, if, if this is what you want to say, he says stylistically, he says, I think the way I try to play is more in line with that than Chavi. And we can debate whether it's right yeah, or yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been fine. Yeah, yeah, I see what you but mean. But to go off and to talk yeah. about the stuff that he's won and blah, 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 dude, okay, yeah. fine. You know, and then so the next what? day, so when you said on the Tuesday, you better make sure that Wednesday you're better than the guy that you just dissed because that's what he did. And tactically, Chavi, even with his substitution when they were 2 1 down, he never panicked. Pedri had an impact. Whether we like the pass or not, Christensen had an impact. We like Swe- the pass. We like the pass. But whether you think the pass is genius or not, <laughs> switching Rafinha from left wing to right wing, as we, all of that worked. And to be fair, you have to say that on the night, on Wednesday night, Xavi won the tactical battle. All right. Uh, you still feeling percentages here? Is the, I mean, it's 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 halftime. Yeah. And they're three two up. Yeah. That's how we need to think about yeah. this. Can PSG win two one at Mondrick? 100 percent right but Definitely. there's no but with the away goals jules no just kidding so yeah, I so think, they win 2-1 think... and then you go to yeah, to ex- yeah yeah you go to extra extra time, yeah. can they win two nil i i think there were some good things from this phd team overall i'm you know by patches especially in the second well, certainly in the second half i think if luis enrique gets it right this time barca you know is going to play okay even if pedri can start and i'm not sure game of their intensity but I think PSG will have to find it right. They will need Mbappe. So Barca, because they are Mondrick, slightly favorite. Last night on the ESPN FC show, I said 55-45 Barca. I think Jan Agafiotov said 60-40. And then Luis Garcia, former Barcelona player, went like 70-30 Barca now. Why are they so silly like that? I don't know. I, I think it's still it's yeah. great. It's, it's nicely poised. It's very nicely poised. And again, I think it is also as relevant that as well as Barcelona played, those were three gifted goals, courtesy yeah. of my boy Gijo. So um, I think we need to consider that uh, as well. I, I agree with you. 55-45 Barca sounds about right to me.